Hi guys, it's Miss Raven here, Programs and Outreach Librarian, and I am here for another Tuesday Story Time in our Imagine Your Story Summer Reading Program. So today we will focus on fairy tales. Who doesn't love fairy tales? So we'll read a couple of books and then we'll come back for a fun activity. Are you ready? Let's go! Give us a smile, Cinderella. Once upon a time, there was a young girl called Cinderella. She lived in a big house with her mean old stepmother and two horrible stepsisters, Griselda and Prunella. They made Cinderella do all of the housework while they lazed about eating sweets. Griselda and Prunella were so lazy that they couldn't even be bothered to brush their teeth. Their teeth went yellow, then green, then brown, and some of them even fell out. The stepsisters often had toothaches too, which made them even meaner. Poor Cinderella worked hard all day, but no matter how tired she was, she always brushed her teeth twice a day, once in the morning and then once again just before bedtime. When she went to sleep, Cinderella dreamed that she was married to a handsome prince and lived in a beautiful castle and never had to do any housework ever. As it happened, there was a handsome prince called Rupert in a castle not very far away. His dad, the king, wanted Rupert to get married and he had a genius idea. We'll hold a ball, he cried excitedly. What? A soccer ball? asked Rupert. No, not a soccer ball, said the king. A ball ball, like a big fancy party. You're bound to find the girl of your dreams and we'll have the wedding a week after. So that was settled. A few days later, the invitations to the royal ball were sent out. Look, there's one for me, gasped Cinderella. Yes, but you can't go, sneered Griselda. That's right, said Prunella, you have nothing to wear. The stepsisters made Cinderella brush their hair and they made her lace them into their ball gowns. And finally, the stepsisters and their mother went to the ball, leaving Cinderella home all alone. Cinderella sat in the floor and started to cry and then poof, a beautiful lady appeared in a cloud of smoke. Who are you, gasped Cinderella. I am your fairy godmother, said the lady. Cinderella, you shall go to the ball. Poof, here's your ball gown. Poof, here are your glass zippers. And poof, here are your coach and horses. Magic, gasped Cinderella. Well, yes, chuckled her fairy godmother, but the magic will only last until midnight, so make sure you're home by then. Oh, Dad, I'll never find the girl of my dreams, Prince Rupert moaned to the king. I just danced with two girls with terrible teeth and breath like stinky cheese. Keep trying, my boy, said the king. And just then, a girl walked in with the most beautiful smile Rupert had ever seen. Who's that, said Griselda and Prunella. They had no idea it was Cinderella. Prince Rupert was in love. He couldn't wait to dance with anyone else for the rest of the night. And at the end of the evening, he took Cinderella's hand and said, will you be my... Bong, bong, bong. The clock started to strike midnight. Bong, bong, bong. Cinderella ran through the crowded ballroom. Bong, bong, bong. One of her shoes fell off. Bong, bong, bong. Cinderella had just skidded through the palace doors when poof, she was back in her raggedy old dress again. Oh, Drax, cried Prince Rupert. The girl of my dreams has disappeared. And then he saw Cinderella's tiny glass slipper and he had a great idea. 
he would ask every girl in the kingdom to try on the shoe, and whoever it fit, he would marry. So the prince trailed around the kingdom looking for his true love, but the shoe didn't fit anyone. At last, he arrived at Cinderella's house. Griselda, Prunella, and Cinderella all tried on the shoe. And oh dear, it fit all of them. Then the prince said, I know, smile for me. So Prunella smiled, Griselda smiled, and Cinderella smiled too. It's really you, said the prince, your smile is magical. There's no magic involved, said Cinderella, just toothpaste. Say you'll marry me, cried the prince. Well, let me see you smile first, said Cinderella. The prince smiled, showing a row of sparkly white teeth. Okay then, said Cinderella, and they lived happily ever after. The end. So that's a reminder for us all to make sure we brush those teeth twice a day. That was a good story. Next up, we've got a classic story of the three little pigs. These are three little pigs. The time has come for them to set out on their own. The first pig builds her her house out of straw. The second little pig builds her house out of sticks. And the third little pig wants her house to be strong so she builds her house out of bricks. Suddenly a big bad wolf appears in search of food. He comes to the door of the first little pig's house Knock, 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 little pig, little pig, let me in, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house and the wolf takes a deep breath and the straw house tumbles down. The first little pig scurries to safety in the house of sticks. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in, not by the hair of my chinny chin, chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and blow your house in. The two little pigs escape to their sister's brick house, but the wolf follows them. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. But try as he might, huff, puff. <sighs> the wolf could not blow down the house of bricks. So he climbed on the roof and slid down the chimney instead. The wolf was not expecting a pot of Boiling water at the bottom. Ow! The three little pigs never saw that big bad wolf again. The end. All right, it's time for another classic story. And this one is called Jack and the Beanstalk. This is Jack. Can we say hi, Jack? Lately, some of his family's things have gone missing. A bag of gold coins, a chicken, and a magical harp. When Jack's mother sends him out to sell their cow, instead of money, he returns with magic beans. Angry, his mother tosses the beans out the window. The next morning, Jack finds an enormous beanstalk outside where the beans had fallen. When his mother goes to town, Jack decides to climb it. At the top, Jack finds a sleeping giant and many of his family's missing things. He spots their bag of gold coins and brings it back down the beanstalk. The following day, Jack climbs back up the beanstalk to rescue their family's chicken. A chicken who lays golden 
eggs. But the next day, when Jack returns to take back their magical harp, the giant fee fi fo fum Jack races home, but the giant follows. Once at the bottom, Jack chops through the beanstalk. Welcome back, Cal. And now the giant can't return and Jack and his family live happily ever after. The end, that's Jack and the Beanstalk. All right, so I think it would be cool if today we made a popsicle stick little pig, just like the one in the story. So for this activity, you'll need a pair of scissors, a marker Sharpie, Popsicle sticks, glue stick, and a couple pieces of pink construction paper. All right, so one of the first things we want to do is we want to make a triangle with our popsicle sticks, and then we want to glue them together. Just like that. All right, so our next step would be to draw a triangle that's bigger than our popsicle triangle that we already have here. So we kind of want to outline this. this and then we can cut it out. All right, so I went ahead and glued my pink construction paper to my triangle. Next, we want to use our same sheet of construction paper and draw two triangles for ears and let's draw a snout. Is that cool? All right, so this is what our pig looks like so far. And I believe we can bring him to life by adding some eyes. Is that cool? Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Well, guys, that's all I have for today. As always, thanks for tuning in. And be sure to tune in for the rest of the week because we've got some fun, exciting things lined up for virtual programming. Have a great day.